Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here at Mad About Skin, we're passionate about helping you to get the most out of your skincare. So if you haven't already, now's a fantastic time to click that link below, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and you won't miss out on any of our amazing future content. Now, today's video, we're gonna be doing a full brand review, and this is on a brand which you guys have begged me to review, and something actually I've been really keen to review for a long, long time, and that is Drunk Elephant. Now, Drunk Elephant is a reasonably newcomer to the whole skincare game, under 10 years old, it was really founded by somebody, well the founder was um, keen to strip out some of the six key things in skincare she believed was causing irritation, sensitivity and her own skincare problems. So in this line you don't see any chemical sunscreens, you don't see any SLSs, you don't see any essential oils. There's a whole suite of things which they miss out, they take out of their products to hopefully make them more easily tolerated by the skin and to deliver what they believe to be better um, results. I'm not hugely sold on some of the things they miss out. Chemical sunscreen, for example, I use a daily chemical sunscreen with no problems whatsoever. It causes me no irritation or sensitivity. And I think it's personal preference whether you want to go chemical or mineral and companies shouldn't be deciding on your behalf what you should and shouldn't be using. However, it has a cult following and this brand has grown and exploded in the last 10 years. It's recently just been bought out by Shiseido, which is a huge brand for reportedly $800 million. So this is big money company. And beauty editors have been raving about the quality of their products and ingredients, in particular some of their core products which I'm going to get onto. So we're going to put it to the test, there's going to be no bias, no tea, we're just going to go into this and we're going to look at each product individually and whether this should be a place for it in your skincare routine. As with all brands, there are some really good products and there are some wah, 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 total duds and we're going to break that down and work out which ones you should have in your skincare routine and which ones you just need to toss and avoid completely. From the outset, I will say Drug Elephant are super bougie when it comes to that price tag. The majority of these products retail for around $70 to $150, maybe a little bit more expensive. This is a pricey skincare brand. That doesn't necessarily mean it's bad and I do think we, on this channel, I try to um, review price points, various different price points because different people have different budgets and want to spend different amounts of money on skincare. But straight from the off, this is a pricey skincare line. So there ain't no ordinary drugstore pricing in this. I'll be going through the pricing of each product, whether I think they're worth the splurge or actually these should just avoid. As with all these reviews, and if you haven't checked out some of the four brand reviews I've done before, I'll link a playlist there, which is definitely worth a watch. But as with all of these, I like to start on the positive. I think there's enough negativity going on at the moment that we should start with the positive and the best products from this brand. I'll also call out some really good stuff. All of their product has marula oil in it, which is kind of their unique selling point. The drunk elephant name came from um, Elephants eating the fruit from the marula tree, which when it falls to the ground, it ferments and gives the elephant a drunken appearance. Actually turns out to be complete tosh and isn't actually true and they don't eat the stuff that falls on the ground and don't appear drunk anyway. It's a bit of a myth, but that's where the name came from. But all of them have marula oil in, which is fantastic moisturiser and a really good natural oil. So I do like that. All of their products are cruelty free, which is fantastic. I love to support cruelty free brands because I think in 2020 there should be no cruelty in our skincare and really we should start to be phasing that out. So this is a fantastic option for people that want a cruelty free option. There's plenty of vegan options that sit within this as well. Obviously, you have to check the individual product for that but there's plenty of vegan options and overall I think the packaging is beautiful and to die for so there's definitely the positives and we're going to go into my favorite brand my favorite products from this brand first off I think we're going to go for their signature product that is their 100% cold pressed virgin marula oil this is $72 for what is a facial oil it's packed full of antioxidants and it is a beautiful hydrating facial oil now do I think you need to spend $72 on a facial oil? Absolutely not. I did a whole video on drugstore face oils, which I'll link there. There's some really good cheaper alternatives. However, this is cold press, which you should definitely look for because if you use a heat treated process for withdraw um, drawing out the oil, it can diminish it and it can remove some of the antioxidant benefits from it. So cold pressed is good. It's 100%. Um, I don't like any additives in um, face oils. I don't think you need them. So I love the fact that there's no additives, preservatives and things in here. It's just 100% virgin marula oil which is great and it's quite difficult to find marula oil out there so it's a different oil it's very hydrating it has some fantastic antioxidant properties and it's quite hard to find so drunk elephant have delivered this in what is a really good product do i think you need to spend this much money on a face oil no however if you like the brand and you like a face oil i think this is a really good one that's going to deliver a really great hydration to your skin a lovely moisturization and it doesn't smell particularly funky some of them can smell a bit funky this doesn't it goes on quite nicely it sinks in nicely 
it's a good product. So I'm going to start on the positive and say I think their signature product, which is the 100% virgin marula oil, is a win and a firm hit from me. That I personally wouldn't be spending that much money on it. And I'm going to rate the product 8 out of 10. Really well formulated, really well extracted in terms of the oils. And if the price was just a little bit more affordable, I think I would be totally on board with this and be giving it 10 out of 10. Beautiful start. And we are off to a flying start with Drunk Elephant. Now we're moving on to one of their, I think, the biggest product. This is one of their Instagram hits. It's the beauty editors went mad for this. Everybody wanted to try it, so I got my hands on it and I was reasonably impressed. And this is the TLC Sukari Baby Facial. This is a exfoliating treatment. It's $80 um, in the US. It comes in at £75 here in the UK. So again, reasonably pricey, but this has a mixture of 25% AHAs and 2% BHAs. It is similar uh, to the peeling solution by The Ordinary, which is 30% AHAs and 2% BHAs. So that's slightly stronger. This is slightly weaker. Where this differs and where I think is a nice product to have and something quite slightly different is, whereas The Ordinary peeling solution is just glycolic acid as its AHA, this is a mix of um, AHA, so it's multiple alpha hydroxy acids, which I think gives a really nice multi-level exfoliation. It really brings out the vibrancy and the glow in the skin, and I think it is a really nice product. Um, again, it's got the virgin marula oil in here, which is nice. It keeps it hydrating. It offsets some of the dryness and sensitivity you can, you can get with an AHA, so I like that. And it is the right pH, so you've got to be really careful with pHs in alpha hydroxy acids. Beta hydroxy acid, salicylic acid, things like that, very forgiving. You can use them at most pHs. Alpha hydroxy acid has to be formulated at the right pH, otherwise it can cause sensitivity and it can cause irritation. Beautifully formulated and it's buffered with humectants and moisturisers, and so you're not going to get quite as much dryness and irritation as you can get from a full strength, um, almost peel strength um, alpha hydroxy acid. So really well formulated, really well thought through. Again, I do have a little bit of an issue with the price point. I think it's quite expensive. I think if you haven't got sensitive skin and you haven't got um, irritation, existing irritation, the peeling solution by the ordinary will do pretty much the same for, I think it's $10 which is like one eighth of the cost of this. However, if you do think you want to increase your um, exfoliation game, but you're worried about the sensitivity, this is a beautiful option because it's not gonna dry your skin out and it is gonna give you that baby, soft, gorgeous, glowing, radiant complexion that we all crave. It works and it works after the first use, which very few skincare products do. So I love, love, love this product. And it is one that I keep going back to, even though I gasp every time I look at the price. I do keep going back to it. And so it must be a good product. I'm gonna give this a firm, firm, 10 out of 10. I'm forgetting the price because I do keep purchasing it so it must be doing something right and I love the effort that's gone into formulating this and I love the fact that as a brand they've really thought about the mixture of alpha hydroxy acids whereas they could have just thrown in a glycolic acid and it would still have the same name and the same claims but they've really thought about it and I think it's the additionality of benefit you get from this over say like the ordinary one I do think it's worth a little bit of extra coin if you can afford it so yeah definitely a 10 out of 10 product and I think probably my favorite of all their products. Now we go to the Bestie number no. 9 Jelly Cleanser. This is $32. So this is probably one of their cheapest products out there. It's $32. It's a cleanser. So it's limited to how exciting you can get with a cleanser. I really love this. And this is a fantastic cruelty-free option for a second cleanse in your double cleanse. It goes on as a... Um, it's like a jelly consistency. It washes off really nicely. It doesn't leave a trace. I love the fact that it's cruelty free. I love the fact that it's got that marula oil in as well. So it's going to be hydrating at the same time as cleansing, which is great. And I think it, is, it finds the perfect balance between cleansing, but not stripping. Really good cleansers often have a quite harsh mechanism of action and can strip the skin a little bit. This doesn't. It really will get off quite heavy makeup, SPF, mineral SPF even. It will get everything off, but you don't doesn't leave your, feeling, your skin feeling raw. You could use it as your standalone cleanser. I prefer to use it as the second step in a double cleanse, but you could absolutely use this as your go-to cleanser as just do a single step cleanse and you'd get fantastic results from it. Definitely, definitely worth the punt. I don't think you need to spend $32 on a cleanser, but this is a really lovely one and the packaging's gorgeous i love the fact it's cruelty free and a lot of you guys have come to me and said i want a cruelty free second step in my skincare routine in my cleansing routine what do i go for this is a fantastic option and because it works and it delivers what it needs to deliver i'm going to give this a nine out of ten a little bit overpriced i think for what it is but overall it's a fantastic fantastic product and definitely one you should check out if 
you are looking for something that's a little bit different in the cleansing market because the texture is quite unique. It's more jelly-like than it is watery. It goes on. It's not slippery enough that you could do a facial massage with it, which is why I tend to stick to like the Square Lane Cleanser by The Ordinary. But it certainly gets off all that dirt, all the grime, and all the SPF and pollution from the day, which I absolutely love. So definitely worth a look. Finally, on their hits. There's four standout hit products. We're on, we've done three. The fourth is the A Passioni Retinol Cream. I've covered this on the channel. In fact, I did a whole review on it, which I'll link up there. This was my go-to retinol for years. It's, it's pricey. I mean, we're talking like $100 for two months worth of product, but it is super strength. Anybody that wants practically prescription strength retinol in a product, this is great. It will dry. You will get irritation, you will get downtime, and you will get redness, which is what you expect from a retinol. But for the strength, I think it's a lot less than some other ones that are of a similar strength. So it's really well formulated to lessen as much as possible the side effects from the retinol. You're going to get them. You need to just kind of get past that and get to the lovely, gorgeous skin on the other side. This is a really good product. It packs a punch, and I would be super careful if you have anything other than normal or oily skin. Anyone that's a little bit dry or a little bit sensitive this ain't for you, but it is a beautiful, beautiful retinol. I used it for years. And if you want a bit more of an in-depth look at the ingredients and things that go into it, check out my review because um, I did a whole video just dedicated to this product, which is why I think it's a star, star product. Nine out of 10, because I think it's a little bit pricey. Again, this comes into, I think, you've got to weigh up the additional benefit from paying extra for the product versus the price point. I think it's not just not quite there, which is what's stopping it getting a 10 out of 10, but a gorgeous product all the same. I did really enjoy using this product and I used it for years, irrespective of the price. Now with the good comes the bad. I'm going to talk a little bit later in the video about some of the issues, so stay tuned for that, some of the issues around the brand that some people are concerned with the brand, but I'll come into that later. We're just going to get onto what products I think you just need to give a firm pass to and just are not worth the money and not worth the splurge. The first one is the Makeup Melting Butter Cleanser. No, did nothing. It left a trace on the skin, which I hate because I just think you need to be able to use it get rid of it and if you if it's leaving a trace i think it means that the rest of your skincare has to fight through that layer to get in contact with the skin to do its work so i think it impairs the rest of your skincare that a, tr a cleanser should be disappeared without a trace this one didn't it's 40 dollars it's just too much for a butter cleanser. Stick to the oat cleansing balm by the Inculus. Gorgeous product. Won't, honestly, it won't leave a trace. It's absolutely fantastic. Way better than this. You just don't need it in your life. The C Firma Day Cream. Now, this is going to be controversial because I know loads of you love this and think this product is amazing. First off, it's nearly $100, which is bougie, bougie, bougie for what is a vitamin C. I did a whole video on my favorite vitamin Cs, which I'll link there. I recently did that. And there are some fantastic vitamin Cs better than this at half the price. I don't know why you're paying nearly $100 for a vitamin C serum. I do like the fact it's in a pump because that'll reduce some of the oxidization that happens. So it probably will last a little bit longer. It's not a particularly powerful vitamin C. It's not a particularly good vitamin C. It's fine. The formulation is okay, but... For me, I just think there's better ones out there, there's cheaper ones out there, and this did nothing for my skin. I, I, I just wasn't a fan of it. Similarly, unimpressive was the Umbra Sheer Physical Daily Defense SPF. Now, they don't do any chemical SPFs in this line. It's all mineral all the way. This one is at $40 and just is vile. I absolutely hate it. It is ashy, it doesn't sink in, it's impossible to get off. It did provide the coverage that you wanted it to cover, but no, it just didn't sink in with the skin. It looked white cast on my skin, so it would be totally unsuitable for anybody else that's darker than me. So it's not particularly inclusive. I really didn't like the smell of it. It irritated my skin. It was itchy. It was just a no. I, I, there's so many amazing physical, mineral, and um, other SPS out there. You, this isn't it for me. I, I just don't think it's a good product. I get why they're obsessed with mineral and don't want a chemical sunscreen, but it's just it's just not good. I mean, this should be no one's go-to SPF. It's just not good. The Proteiny Peptide Cream, $70. I've heard some really, really popular YouTubers rave about this. I love peptides. I think peptides are fantastic. They help support the skin barrier function. They help collagen production, and they're fantastic at hydrating. So peptides are like beautiful. You need them in your life. You just don't need this product in your life. $70 for a peptide cream. You can get the Cicaplast Balm by La Roche-Posay. Does exactly the same thing. Has a nicer consistency and costs $5. 
you are wasting your money if you're buying this. I do like the dispenser because it comes in a sealed airtight container that you just push the lid and a bit comes up. So it's all very clean and hygienic. So I do like that. But that's not enough to make me want to spend $70 on a peptide cream. Not good. Not worth the money and just overpriced. Finally, the Framboise Glycolic Night Serum. $80 and this is a 12% AHA and a BHA blend. I don't get it. The Baby Facial, really nice. Different, innovative mix of AHAs, really liked. This one, I just know. I mean, it's kind of a little bit too strong to use every single day, I think. I don't know why you should use it in the evening. I like to use my glycolic in the morning. It's a little bit strong to use every single day, but that's what they reckon you should do. Um, if you want basically the same product, just get the glycolic fix um, by Nip and Fab. I love that product, and it's like $7. This is like 80 a waste of money, people go mad for it, but no, this is just clever marketing, you don't need it. I like a mix of AHA and BHAs together, someone that's oily like me, it's a beautiful combination. Get it with a nip and fab, save your money, same product, just as good, I just, no. This is a firm pass. So, overall, there are some other products which I haven't been able to get my hands on and test, which I haven't included them back. This is the, this is the majority of their most famous products. Overall, what do I think? I'm just a bit bored and unimpressed by Drunk Elephant and I know that sounds really harsh because I got a lot of effort goes into this brand and I get it, it's been created from the bottom up but I just think it's really overpriced for what it is. They have a few really good products which justify the price point but the rest of them it's just gimmicky, king. It's just gimmicky clever marketing and overpriced tut. I don't like it. I also have huge issues with the brand itself. So they have a really, really dodgy reputation of attacking anybody which dares to say that their products aren't that great online. Do you know what? Skincare is original and it's unique to each individual. And if I don't like a product, there might be loads of other people that do. I always leave the comments that in these videos. I always leave the comments up there. You guys can leave a comment. You can read me to filth. I'll respond to it in a professional way. That's absolutely fine. That's kind of what the internet's for. It's not for you know trolling people and being verbally abused as a company because somebody dares to disagree that your product's good and they went through a phase of attacking anybody that attacked them and it's just unprofessional it's just nasty that also their customer service is supposed to be dire i tried to return a product um which i ordered direct from them i tried to return a product because the lid was cracked i thought it's not sealed it's not great couldn't get hold of anyone. Absolute nightmare. So if you are going to buy any of these products, buy it from somewhere like Space NK or Cult Beauty, where actually you can get customer service and is a really good brand that you can then return the product to because you have no success with them, which I just think is a total failure, especially from a bougie brand. All brands should provide good customer service, but a bougie brand like this, they should be on it. They should be literally begging their customers to come back at these price points, not treating them like dirt because they dare to want to return a product. All that sits really unwell with me. I don't like the price point of this product. I don't like this obsession with not having these, you know, six ingredients been the tools of the devil. It's they're not, you know, chemical sunscreen is absolutely fine. I use this chemical sunscreen every single day, it's fine. It it doesn't create it's a personal choice. You I don't like companies that force things down your neck that you have to like this. I think Overall, I'm not a huge fan of the brand. I think the retinol cream is fantastic, though there are cheaper alternatives out there. I do think the jelly cleanser is great and is unique and something a bit different, so I do like that. And I like the baby facial. I think there's definitely a place for that. The rest of the products, there's better dupes. I might do a whole video on dupes for Drunk Elephant. I think it has been done by... Cassandra Banks and did one um, that was really good. So I kind of don't want to repeat what other people have already done. I'm probably better than me. But... I just, there's so many good dupes. So explore, don't just buy from this brand. And I know they've got a huge cult following, which I don't actually think is that well deserved. And overall, I'm gonna give this brand a four out of 10. Salvaged by a few really good products, but let down by their absolutely dire customer service, their gimmicky packaging and claims, their overpriced to the hilt price point, And it's just not one for me. Now, I am totally open to criticism and other people's opinions. So leave me a comment below. I'd love to know what you think. Is this a brand you love? Are there any, any products that you would recommend that I've missed out? Let me know. Leave me all the feedback before. Hopefully, if you like this video, you'll give it a thumbs up. Even if you don't agree with my opinions, you can still like the video. Give this video a thumbs up, which really helps the channel. And wherever in the world you are, guys, I'm sending you lots of love and kisses from here in the UK. Take care. Bye.